In this forecast, a large and extremely dangerous storm system is coming to the United States over the next few days and will produce widespread severe weather with damaging winds, large to very large hail and tornadoes, in addition to some very heavy and torrential flooding rains. We're going to keep you covered on that and talk about a pattern change as we go into the middle of June for Father's Day weekend in the tropics at the end of the video. So if you are here, make sure to subscribe to the channel for daily weather forecast breakdowns, turn on post notifications so you're notified for future videos and live streams on the channel, share it with a friend family member or on social media and also if you want to comment any questions you have down below definitely appreciate it and of course like the video it helps to get this vital information out to as many people as possible we have an enhanced risk of severe weather continuing for the atlanta metro into north georgia over here into northeastern alabama and into southeastern tennessee including chattanooga this evening and this is for in more numerous rounds of severe weather we have a large slight risk extending back there into the Red River Valley of North Texas all the way over into the Carolinas and Virginia mainly seeing some damaging winds and hail for the rest of today's storms but cannot still rule out an isolated or brief tornado. Here at 6 o'clock we got a cluster of some thunderstorms moving through the Atlanta metro and just past Chattanooga and these storms will be weakening as they push into western Carolinas. Now additional storm development is possible 8 to 9 o'clock this evening so mid-evening across northern Mississippi. We're talking the Tupelo area area maybe as far west as Memphis Tennessee these storms are going to be slow to drop south and east but they will move through areas of Huntsville Florence into T Birmingham Tuscaloosa eventually reaching the Montgomery area with 60 mile per hour winds quarter size hail being possible and an isolated brief tornado and some localized heavy downpours and that's the thing. These storms are going to be moving slowly, so some flooding rains will be possible going through your Sunday morning time frame. Now, across portions of the upper Midwest, a cold front attached to our upper level low across western Ontario, Canada, is going to bring some cooler air for one, but that will ignite some severe weather as we have the warmer air out ahead of it, the cooler air behind it, and a clash of the air masses means we're going to be seeing a line of thunderstorms. This will be on a weakening trend as it pushes through the Minneapolis-St. Paul region, but there could still be a rogue thunderstorm or two that could produce some 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail and a very brief tornado. Uh, the tornado risk though is very unlikely up here into Minnesota as we just don't have a lot of rotation. It's just a whole line of storms. That line of storms will enter into Wisconsin after around 2, 3 in the morning and could be pushing into areas like Rhinelander down toward uh, La Crosse, Stevens Point and the Wisconsin Dells. So be keeping an eye on that going into Sunday morning. The big show is tomorrow. We have a moderate risk upgrade from our friends over at the Storm Prediction Center. This is a 4 out of 5 on the risk scale in Cherry Red for for the Red River Valley, this is including Lawton, Fort Sill, Wichita Falls, and especially the northern side of the DFW metro area from Amarillo to Oklahoma City all the way to Texarkana we have a 3 out of 5 enhanced risk in Orange and we have severe weather possible all the way up in areas like Rockford and Chicago and Milwaukee there into Illinois and Wisconsin and some early morning storms that could pose some severe weather risks across Virginia, Maryland down through the eastern Carolinas and southern Georgia as we go into Sunday. The biggest risk by far is going to be a derecho we actually could be seeing 80 to 100 100 mile per hour winds across the Red River Valley starting back here near Amarillo and really starting to move quickly across the Dallas Fort Worth area Oklahoma City Lawton all the way toward Texarkana this could be a widespread windstorm and this could cause some days lasting power outages. So something we're definitely monitoring. And in addition to some very large hail, we could be seeing hailstones two, three, four inches in diameter that we see a lot of the times in Texas and Oklahoma. Could be seeing up to softball size hail with these storms initially. And there's an elevated tornado risk in Brown. That's a 5% chance of tornadoes, including major metropolitan hubs of Oklahoma City. Lawton down there in toward Wichita Falls, Amarillo, and Dallas, Fort Worth. Up towards St. Louis, we have a 2% chance of tornadoes up there. And then an elevated tornado risk with earlier day storms, eventually later day storms as well across eastern Virginia and into Maryland, including the Washington D.C. area. So, a lot to cover. Let's talk about it here in the east. These are your morning storms at 7 a.m. on Sunday. Notice we're seeing those storm clusters continuing across Mississippi, Alabama, and southern Georgia, scattered showers across portions of the mid-Atlantic. As we go to the noon time frame, that will start to dwindle down here across southern Alabama and Georgia. Still seeing some thunderstorms out there. A couple of them could be severe. We're watching storm development here in West Virginia, northern Virginia, and Maryland. These could actually pose a risk for all hazards, including tornadoes, damaging winds, and hail. So we're definitely watching this as we go into the mid-afternoon tomorrow. So we uh, could be seeing that in the Washington, D.C. 
DC area, down there into Richmond, Virginia, and up there into Parkersburg, for example, of West Virginia. And then those storms will start to dwindle as we lose the daytime heating after the sun sets tomorrow evening. The big area of concern is Oklahoma and Texas stretching into Arkansas and Louisiana as we go into Sunday afternoon. At noon, we're up to five to even 6,000 joules per kilogram of storm energy. That is extreme amounts of storm energy. There's going to be some rotation with these storms as well. They're going to be so fast moving that you make sure that you are in the indoors, right? If the tornado warning is issued, you are indoors. If you don't have a basement, move into an interior room far enough away from the outside world as possible and make sure it's in the center of your home, but also the lowest point in your home as well, as these tornadoes sometimes with these fast moving storms can go unwarned. So here at 7 a.m., we are quiet outside of a couple rumbles of thunder over here into Texarkana, into Shreveport, into Monroe, and Jackson, Mississippi. We're watching by noon a thunderstorm could develop here in the panhandle of Oklahoma or far north Texas panhandle. This would be a supercell, right? Because it's by itself. Very large softball size hail. A tornado and 70 mile per hour winds will be the initial threats with those storms. And then watch how they quickly cluster up by 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon approaching areas of Lawton, Fort Sill, and Oklahoma City. And these storms, as they get going, there's a lot of cool air aloft. It's called a cold pool, and they will type, they will kind of move to the east at first, and then once you get cold pool organization, basically it's rain cooled air. It's going to make those storms turn more to the south, and it will make it cross the Red River and into the Dallas Fort Worth area by nine o'clock tomorrow evening. Could be very noisy across the DFW Metroplex. 80 to 100 mile per hour winds is the main threat here. A spin up tornado cannot be ruled out across the leading edge and also some very heavy blinding rain and hail something we're watching there into dallas fort worth approaching texarkana by midnight and shreveport as well down into tyler texas and then as we go into the 7 a.m time frame or so that's going to be moving into our jackson mississippi on a weakening trend so this could qualify as a derecho has to go at least 400 miles to do so and i'm not joking this could literally be a significant widespread windstorm the hrr model is very much in line of showing 128 mile per our winds. Now that could be a little bit overdone, but still 80 to 100 mile per hour winds can do a significant amount of damage and it could lead to some days lasting power outages across that region. So in addition to the severe weather threat, very heavy and torrential rainfall that could cause some flooding. These are fast moving storms, so they are going to not be around for a while, but they can produce a lot of rain in a short amount of time. We're talking two to four inches here across southern Oklahoma and north Texas as they move through. Now, as we go into Monday, June 9th, just can't get a break, right? We have scattered severe weather again across the southeast, up into the Tennessee Valley there into the mid-Atlantic. Uh, damaging winds, large hail look to be the main threats here, but isolated tornadoes will also be possible. The upper level low, 998 millibars there in central Ontario will promise a cold front to ignite storms across the southeast by Monday afternoon, and those storms could pose a risk again for damaging winds, large hail, and isolated tornadoes. That upper level load is going to have a little bit of a pack of a punch to it to the upper Midwest of Great Lakes in the form of some cooler air. And that's going to keep our storm energy levels down through the middle of next week. So not talking about any big storms up there, at least for now. But the pattern change is coming later next week by Father's Day weekend. We're going to see a ridge replacing it. And a ridge is bringing warmer and more humid temperatures further north. We have a trough starting to appear across the west coast. So where the ridge is early in the week is going to shift east, replacing it by a trough. And we could have ridge riders as this trough is going to go up and over top of that ridge. And thunderstorm clusters could result as we have extreme levels levels of instability day after day after day up into the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley. So, and that could also lead to the potential of a derecho in this type of pattern. Areas like Minneapolis, St. Paul, Green Bay, Chicago, Milwaukee, Des Moines, all the way over into Indianapolis, Detroit, into Cincinnati, Louisville. You guys all have to be on high alert for the potential for derechos. Father's Day weekend and then thereafter into the last week or two of June as we're going to have a persistent pattern with that ridge parked over the south central U.S. So we're going to dry out in the southern plains, get really hot, and then we're going to see those storms develop over the top of that and produce the potential of derechos. Talking about temperatures now, uh, behind the cold front, you're going to feel it, right? In the North Dakota, northern Minnesota, highs barely getting out of the 50s as we go into tomorrow afternoon. 
In contrast, in southern Texas, we're at 105, 106 in Phoenix. Monday, we're seeing widespread record heat across the Pacific Northwest, up in the low 100s there. And 107 again in Phoenix. We're at 96, maybe a record there in Houston. And then as we go through next week, watch that by Wednesday, June 11th, the 90s start to appear in the central and even northern high plains and into the Midwest. So it's going to definitely start feeling more like summer out there. And of course, down here in the beaches, areas along the Gulf and the beaches of Florida, we'll have some beach weather, right? We're going to see highs in the upper 80s and the low 90s going through the long range period. Now let's talk about the tropics here, folks. The National Hurricane Center is lit up like a Christmas tree in the East Pacific as we have two areas of high concern for development over the next seven days or so and a low area of concern in yellow just to the south of the Mexico coast. Three separate systems could develop here and this could be very quickly uh, potentially our next system, which would be Barbara in the East Pacific as soon as the next 24 hours and then as we go into the middle of next week, we could see our uh, next system develop. And then later next week, another system behind that. So very active in the East Pacific Ocean. That is for sure. At least down here in the Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf, the National Hurricane Center is not looking at any tropical cyclone activity, at least over the next seven days. We'll keep you updated if there's any changes to that here in the long range forecast. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Very vital information. People need to know about the severe weather, very significant severe weather out there. Turn on post notifications so you're notified for future videos and live streams. Subscribe to the channel and make sure that, again, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, that you jot them down in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. I definitely appreciate it and have a wonderful rest of your night out there.